Hey guys and welcome to another MDO Compositions tutorial. This is the number this is the sixth tutorial in the appetizer series. And today we're going to take a look at how to um, create the first few materials. So let's just open the file we created last time for our episode six. As you can see, we took care of all the modeling, we took care of the lighting. And today we're getting into the materials. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a material for the table, okay? And first and foremost, we need to take care of the texture, okay? Because um, as you might remember, the texture in our case is, let me just find it, is a wood texture, okay? Now, um, creating wood textures on your own is not quite that simple. And most importantly, it's not part of this tutorial. So we are going to take one from cgtextures.com. And in case you don't know cgtextures.com yet, it is a great website. Let's just go there with cgtextures.com. Okay. And um, in order to download textures, you have to create a account, but it's a free account. And with your free account, you can download up to 50 megabytes worth of um, textures and for, per day, per day. So for most of your projects, that is more than enough, okay? Um, and yeah, if you want to start a big project, like with lots of people and stuff, and if you need more textures, then I think it's more than justified to actually create, to actually pay for this, those things, because they are actually absolutely great. Now, what we need, we need the texture from under wood, under fine woods, and then it's this one over here, okay? And what we actually need is this one, okay? And I think... Let me just see something. Yeah, um, it, you're advised to take the, big, the, the biggest size because as you can see in the image, um, over here, the texture is quite up close to the camera. And if you have a too low resolution texture, then it really shows and it just makes everything look ugly and very, very CG. So yeah, pay attention to that. And then just click on it and then you can just download it like this. And save it wherever you want. Uh, I'm unfortunately it, I'm not allowed to actually um, provide this texture for you because um, CG Texture clearly states that they do not want um, their texture to be uh, redistributed. So yeah, but as you can see, it's a very great website. So if you're serious about using textures, make an account over here. It's free, and you can see quota left 50 megabytes of 50 megabytes, which means I did not yet download any textures at all today. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, once you have that. Um, just go into the Blender file and let's just hit the slash key for now. So everything besides the table is actually um, hidden or just not shown because hidden would be something else. Anyway, um, now we did not ta yet talk too much about uh, materials, okay? But it's you can basically create them in this material tab and the textures in the texture tab, okay? Right now you can see we got this material and for this material, we have one texture, okay? Now we can delete this material like this and we can create a new one, okay? And now you can see there are no textures there because, and if you create one like this, you can see you have a new texture, in this case, a cloud texture. But now over here, if you create a second one, you can see once again, there's no texture. So um, in this dialog, you always see the textures that are assigned to one of the materials over here, okay? So, And now you can leave most of those settings because there are quite a few settings. You can leave most of them at default, but you have to make a few adjustments, okay? So about the diffuse, we can leave that as it is. Oh, and by the way, I'm not going to explain all those functions too in depth because I want to make that part of my first steps in preparation series, which covers most of the things and functions quite in depth. But uh, I do not have the time to do that in this episode because there are quite probably quite a few um, um, people watching this that already have a bit of experience and I don't want to bore them, okay? But in my first steps in preparation series, I will make a tutorial quite in-depth about materials and quite soon as well. So now we want to change the intensity to 0.31, okay? Um, and once again, those numbers sometimes seem a bit um, un... Uh, not, not so beautiful because like it could be as well 0.3, but I'm just going with a similar value that I had in my previously created file so I don't get any... Um, unwanted um, surprises okay um, and the hardness of 20 and basically the smaller the hardness 
the bigger the specular reflection and the softer it, it appears and the the harder and the smaller okay like a more polished surface we're gonna go with 20 because wood is not very hard and the intensity is just how intense that is okay so 0 0.31 okay and cooktor is a type and yeah for diffuse we can leave it as it is as i said and then the next thing would be we don't want it to be transparent because wood is not transparent our wood is also not mirroring anything now um you might think that since it's a bit shiny sometimes wood you could check uh, mirror but then you'd have to go with um soft reflections and that just take a lot of time to calculate so we're not going to do that and it's really unnecessary we also don't need subsurface scattering, which is kind of like light um, scattering below the surface of an object, uh, mainly because um, wood does that a little, of course, but it's not visible and it doesn't really make a big difference. Um, then strand rendering is for rendering hair. We don't have any hair in our scene. And but the options, just make sure it's traceable, because otherwise it won't be detected by the ray tracer. And under shadow, make sure it says receive transparent okay and i'm pretty sure that in this scene which is the finished scene shame on me i think i forgot to check um transparent there because that just enables the material to, re to receive transparent shadows which means shadows with less than 100 percent opacity and as you can see over here the shadow here and here is has quite the same darkness as this one over here so i probably forgot to check that but now we won't so that's basically the settings for the material itself and one other thing uh, you can change this color to whatever you want we're going with the brown okay and that is because usually if you render this right now uh, let me just bring back everything else with the slash key on our numpad right now if you hit f12 you can see it's brown okay but once we assign the texture you can see over here let's just do that let's create a new texture now you can see several types okay right now we have a cloud type and now you can see that's what happens because it uses this color over here okay which is quite ugly but we don't care about that too much um you can also go with magic marble just different ways for example um musgrave is good for uh, texturing water um noise is good for creating well noise no i'm sorry stucci is good for water musgrave is something else verona is good to create uh, um organic surfaces like for example um um, skin or something and so on and so forth in our case we want to go with image remove because we have an image that actually represents wood best and then under colors you can kind of adjust the colors the brightness contrast saturation R, G, and B. we don't want to do that at least not just now and then under image we actually want to load in our image okay so in my case that will be under pre-scene and that's what it looks like would find 39 and now we got that loaded in okay and next thing is image sampling now we're not going to talk too much about those um, options in this tutorial however one thing i'd like to show you is filter size okay the bigger that is the more blurred the image becomes okay and this is kind of important to avoid flickering because if it's too sharp then it kind of flickers when you have an animation but since our case is not an animation and since it's actually quite up close to the camera we wanted this to be more or less small so let's go with 0.2 okay Actually, maybe even point 0.1. Yeah, that's too much. Point 0.2 is okay. We can still sharpen this in the compositor afterwards, and we will do that actually, but for now, let's just go with point 0.2. So, side that. And under image mapping, um, you can see image mapping and mapping. And the image mapping is kind of how um, the texture is going to be mapped in case it doesn't cover the full surface, okay? So, how is it repeated? In this case, it's just repeated. You can also make it extend. And it's just extended or clip or, or checker or. Yeah, we, we're going to talk all about all those things um, later. We could just leave it at repeat, which is the best thing to choose if you have a tileable texture. And tileable just means that you can um, put it next to each other without creating a seam. Now, in this case, actually, we do not have a tileable texture, I believe. But since it is made up of those uh, planks or whatever they're called, um, you don't really notice. So, repeat is quite fine. And then mapping, this is how this texture is projected onto um, this um, on, on this table, okay? And we're going with UV. And this we're just using the uh, UV map to project that onto that. And we'll create the UV map in just a second. Projection is flat, that is okay as well. And then under here you can see influence color. And you can see it's set to 1. And that just means that this texture influences the color 
by 100%, okay? Which means this color here is no longer being considered at all, okay? And you can see that if right now we hit render, then you can see um, it's not brown anymore. It's just, well, it is brown because of the texture is brown, but the brown that we set over here doesn't matter. We can set that to something blue. The exact same result. Um, like this. Okay, but as you can also see, um, the mapping is kind of weird. Yeah, we have a few streaks over there and over there, and that's, not, that's certainly not how we want it. So we need to unmap it, unwrap it. Okay, but let's just finish that off over here. Um, we created, we, we made it influence the color, but we also wanted to influence the normals, okay? And what that does, it just creates a bump map, which then makes the surface unsmooth, okay? And wood is normally not smooth unless treated in some way. And in our case, we are going with a normal map value of 0.2, okay? We can still adjust that later, later on if it uh, seems too extreme or too to settle, but for now that is quite all right. Cool. And also you can just um, change the, the method to best quality for the bump method. It's not really necessary, but um, it doesn't really um, increase the render times, I believe. Uh, yeah, so we can as well use it. Um, cool. Now about the UV mapping. Right now if we render this, once again, you can see that's how it looks. And um, it doesn't look very appealing, especially because it is mapped the wrong way. So in order to change that, we are going to um, unwrap this table. Okay, so tap into edit mode, go to 7, select everything, and hit U on your keyboard, and then unwrap. Okay, and now if we split this view, and if you go to UV image editor, and if we choose our, our texture, then you can see this being unwrapped over here, okay? And right now, if we just hit U unwrap, then it just unwraps it so that um, all the faces have a appropriate amount of space over here. But in our case, we don't want that. We just wanted this main uh, part here to have an appropriate or a, a good amount of space over here. The rest is not so important because we cannot really see the side, okay? So let's just go to, to the top view with seven. And also right now, um, you can see that uh, this part gets way too much space over here compared to this outer region. Okay, so let's just go to 7, U, and let's go to Project from View. And that's just going to make it so that it projects its one-to-one -one like it is over here. Now over here we can just scale it up and make it a bit bigger actually, so it actually um, tiles it or just repeats it a few times. And now one thing, um, right now we can also do one other thing, we can change that to texture. And then we can actually see how this texture is being mapped onto that over here, okay? And right now you cannot see it well because of the lights, they're not really um, illuminating this side, but you can see this is very stretched because uh, it is projected right onto each other, this upper line, the lower line. So we're going to change that back into edit mode. And let's just with sh uh, Alt right click select this outer line. And let's see if we uh, got the correct one, just scale it out. And you can see it works. And like this is just about fine. As I said, we're not going to see too much of that um, in the final render, but it just looks weird if it's too stretched. Or actually, we're not going to see it at all, but anyway. And now one other thing. Um, this is the wrong way around, okay? I want it so that the, those um, planks go this way. So just edit mode, select everything, R, 90, enter. And now our problem is solved. And now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make it so that it actually looks as interesting as possible. And right now you can see here in the foreground we've got this this nice knot or whatever that is over here. And it's actually quite nice. We can see if we can get a be better perspective. Just select everything over here as well, uh, again and then with the G you can just move it. And you can see how um, the texture updates in real time. And I, I like this, per uh, this view even better because here we have even more wrinkles and stuff going on. Okay. So let's once again see what that gives us with F12. And now you can actually see what happens. You can see um, how this more or less interesting area is over here. And you can also see that um, from the bump mapping we get all this fine structure from the wood, which just looks fabulous. And um, when actually scaled to one-to-one, -to -one, you can see it really looks quite photorealistic already, just the wood. Okay. And that's what we were going for. And this will look much better after post-production, especially because of the contrast and the colors and stuff. 
but for now that's quite all right. Cool, so this is actually more or less it. Um, I'm just gonna change one last thing. I just noticed that in my original file I went with a filter size of 0.5, okay? And it doesn't make a big difference, but just for the sake of keeping it the same as my original file, I'm just going to change that back to 0.5. We can still adjust it later on if we want, and you can also in the compositor use a sharpen node under a filter node with mode set to sharpen to change that. Later on, I'll show you how that works as well. And yeah, that's more or less it for this tutorial, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If you have any kind of questions or comments or suggestions or whatever, please post them in the comments. Um, yeah, thank you for watching and I see you in the next tutorial about um, the materials for the gloss.